So I have no problem doing that. Competition is good unless you got something to hide. In Nashville, I spent a little over $100,000 buying, strictly buying our Harley sold in tank. Maybe a total of $5,000, $6,000 worth of collectible coins. No bullion. Wow. But here, I sold. What you're actually seeing here is the most embarrassing intro I've ever had because as you can see, my lips are not moving to the words that I am saying. And that's because I was at the St. Charles Coin Show on the final day when everyone was wrapping up and I was recording a ton of footage, multiple interviews with dealers. And unfortunately, the microphone was off for almost all of it. And that is unfortunately my problem and my fault. I messed up because I forgot to charge the wireless receiver for my microphone setup. And so even though the microphones themselves we're sending audio out. There is no receiver with power receiving the audio. So listen, we still have a great video for you today though, because we did get audio from at least one of the interviews. And I'm gonna tell you what the other two people said about gold, silver, not just in their shops, but at the coin show as well. So smash that like and let's get into it. My channel is sponsored by sdbullion.com. New customers can get their first order of gold or silver at spot by going to sdbullion.com forward slash new. So my first clip here is with Ryan from Northeast Arkansas Coin Company. Now he does a lot of gold and silver and also specializes in the very cool collectible pieces that you would only ever get one of. So for example, I picked up some of these Kitsume masks and an original Sin silver two ounces from South Korea. And he has a lot of stuff like that. I wish I would have had some B-roll footage of it, but I forgot to get B-roll footage of his cases. But I asked Ryan specifically about how gold has been selling in his shop, because as you know, we had Minot on who said gold has not been selling. Ryan had an opposite opinion and actually said that while there's a lot of people collecting the really cool collectible stuff, they're picking up things like that. He's also selling quite a bit of gold right now. Now he did say that his silver sales are also really strong, but he did not at all say that he is having any trouble moving gold. He says he had a lot of people selling gold. He did, however, agree with what Minot said when he said that a lot of people are selling right now. So in this interview, Ryan specifically said that he had a lot of people coming in that were hurting and they were selling silver to his shop because they need money right now in this moment, which is really unfortunate because that is one thing that's been echoed by pretty much every dealer that I talk to. Ryan's shop is Northeast Arkansas Coin Company. I'll put a link for it down below. Make sure you go check them out and let's move on. Now this next interview, man, I'm really upset that I lost this one. It's with Rodney Livingston. He is out of Texas and he specializes in numismatics, GSA, silver dollars, things like that. And he had a lot to say about that market because what he said about the numismatic market is that post COVID, it really exploded. There were a lot of people buying collectibles, harder to find coins, things that they could hold on to that they thought would increase in value. He said that has basically went away and now numismatics are back to where they were pre COVID. He said demand is still there, but the prices are down. The interest is way down and the demand is still there, but it's nothing like it was just a couple of years ago. But he said it's still a very healthy market. He sees newer people getting into it still, which is a really, really great thing. And he actually took the time to show us some really awesome coins that unfortunately I don't have any of the audio to of him explaining what they were. But if you guys want to contact Rodney, I'm going to put his information up here. Rodney Levingston out of Texas. If you guys are into numismatics, this is a great guy to talk to. Uh, so check him out and let's move on because our next interview is with Mike from Mid-America Coins, who ironically, I have the audio to because it was the first one I did. Mike, how's the show been so far for you? Uh, you know, I've been doing a couple of different shows. I had a show last week, this one blew it away. Really? So where was your show at last week? I was in Nashville. All right, so what about this show has been better than that show? Oh, I mean, I, I like it when I can go to a show where I can sell and buy both. Uh, last week I was doing nothing but buying, this week I'm buying and selling. Sweet. So last week you were just buying. So what are you selling this week? Because I've been talking to a lot of coin dealers uh, who said that they've been selling a lot of silver, but gold's been kind of slow. How's I, it been for you? I actually, I've got to say it's, it's about the same for me as far as selling a lot of silver, but I'm also selling a lot of gold. Okay. So you are selling a lot of gold. Yes. So And now, in the shop and here too. I, bu I bought and sold gold here. I mean, I picked up a really nice 95 uh, gold set here. I'm really pleased about that. Picked up some really nice stuff here. Okay. So I was walking around the show myself and I noticed there's a lot of gold, a lot of silver, a lot of eagles. Like it seems like everyone has a good amount of everything right now. So would you say like in this current market that it's hard to find anything silver or gold at all? Well, it, it, the 90%. 
there is not a ton of 90% on even this floor. I did notice that actually. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's, and you gotta remember, they're not making that anymore. Yeah. So it's getting a little harder. So out of all the silver stuff, I think the 90% actually has the highest premium over everything. Yeah. And it's because of the shortage that we're seeing that we're not seeing a lot of it. You're not seeing a lot of 90%. Do a lot of people bring that in or are more people selling it at it, the shop, not just at the at, show? At the, even at the shop, the guys that bring it to me are dealers more than the public because they might not be selling. Like there's smaller shops around me. Yeah. And if they're not having a good day or a good week, they they bring the stuff over because I am paying over spot for 90% right now. Okay, what what do you pay for 90%? Uh, well, on halves, we've been paying between a buck, buck and a half. We're paying 50 cents to a dollar on dimes and quarters. All right, that's good, because I did a video last week where I called a bunch of coin shops around the US. I only found one shop paying over milk, just one. Uh, and a, I had one guy offer me 12 to 13 times face. Wow. That's low. Yeah. But uh, here's the thing, guys, if you're seeing them paying about 50 cents back or something like that, that's not really too bad. You got to remember, if they're not selling in their shop, they're going to bring it to a company like ours. And then you're going to buy it from and them, so they have to wholesale it, it up. Yeah, they're, they're basically, no, we're going to pay them over milk. We're going to pay them the same as we pay the public. Right, but my point is, is they still have to wholesale it out. They have to sell yeah. it to another dealer. Yeah, they have they to sell it, so they're wholesaling it out, yes, because uh, I noticed that in some shops I'm seeing them guys are selling 4 or $5 over still. The numbers are not there anymore. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, that's where, you know, if you're dealing really with a wholesaler or somebody just a mom and pop shop, just trying to get by. That makes sense. So let me ask you, what about this time right now versus say March, April, when gold and silver were really hot because of the banking failures and all that, what is it like now versus then for you? For me, I mean, I talked to a lot of different dealers and they're telling me they slowed down a little bit. I have not slowed down. That's the problem. I mean, I thought I would see a slowdown. Uh, I I know my foundry companies are really pleased because the, most of the guys are not ordering from the foundry companies because they got it coming in their shop, but they're not selling it. I'm doing both, so I still have to, I'm still forced to order. Gotcha. Do you do most of your buying and selling at coin shows or is it like in your shop? Or which one, which one does more business for you? I would say in my shop, in shop. because I'm, I'm there six days a week, you know, here I'm, it's a weekend show and yeah, you, you know, I do a lot of buying, don't get me wrong. You know, there's times where I'll spend over a hundred thousand dollars at a show. But if I go overall throughout the week, I spend more than that in my shop sometimes. That makes sense. All right, so when people are bringing coins in to sell you or silver or gold in to sell you, what is the main reason for it? Because I know the economy is hurting a lot of people right now. Are they selling because- I th uh, Well, I got people selling because they need to pay their taxes, so on and so forth. Uh, the tax laws just change, as you know, and so some people are trying to get ahead of the game. Uh, the other thing is we got people selling that don't understand the market. Their mother or father passed away and then so they'll just sell it because they'd rather have the money. Uh, but I do recommend that people that come into a shop, I hear it all the time, so I, tell, I usually stop people. I don't know what I got, I don't know what it's worth. Uh, there is honest dealers like me out there, but there's a lot more people that say their head rings real quick. Oh, I'm gonna get to take advantage of these people and pay them a lot less. And that is unfortunate. And I've actually talked about that on my channel a lot. There are so many good shops, but there are just so many bad shops. And it really- I would say there's more bad shops than good shops. And that's why I try to warn people ahead of time. I usually stop when they start talking to me like I said, wait a minute. You shouldn't really tell me that. I, yeah. don't, I don't, you know, I'm not that guy that's going to take advantage of you, but at the same time, if I was that guy, you just gave me an open invitation. Right. So as a coin dealer, do you feel comfortable telling somebody that they should go around and get multiple numbers before they sell? I have no problem doing that. Competition is good unless you got something to hide. So I see you have a lot of silver eagles. I see you have a lot of gold. You said this show has been a lot better than the one you did in Nashville last week. I know I'm not going to ask you for the exact numbers, but... I mean, are we talking 100 ounces or 1,000 ounces in that well, range of let, silver, like let, with gold? Like, let's put it this way. At, in, um, in Nashville, I spent a little over $100,000 buying, strictly buying. I hardly sold anything. Maybe a total of $5,000, $6,000 worth of collectible coins. No bullion. Wow. But here, I sold, 
the first day, and I already had a couple of dealers call me. They, they, I knew it was going to sell. I sold most of my gold. Yeah. But then I picked it all back up. So I love it because I, I feel like I didn't lose any leverage there. Because yeah. I, I'm a hedger. I, I sit there and replace anything I buy. Well, I was going to have to replace all that. Well, right. now I've definitely got it on the same number, so I'm not going to lose any hedging. Gotcha. So at a show like Nashville where you barely sold anything, how do you make money? Is it just buying a lot of stuff and then hoping well, you can sell it? No, well, no, yeah, because uh, you got to remember, I'm a, bu I'm a bullion dealer. I know I've got it sold. I know I'm going to have customers coming in. We, we've been selling a lot. I mean, you know, there, if I was a smaller shop where people didn't know about me, yeah, that would be a high risk. But for me, it's not. So usually when I go to a show and I see I ain't doing much, I start putting the word out, this is what I'm paying, this is what I'm paying, and I start getting merchandise that way. They bring it to me. Well, Mike, I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to look around a bit at the show and maybe buy, even buy some stuff from you today. Uh, guys, Mike has a coin shop in Grove, Oklahoma. It's Mid-America Coins. I'm sure most of you have heard of it, but if you haven't, I will put a link for that down in the description. Mike, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you very much, Mr. Seeker. Absolutely. So, of course, at this point, I wanted to go around and get some B-roll footage of the show so you can see everything's packing up. The safes behind me in this clip that you can't hear me in are empty, and there isn't really much left going on. But when I was there, I did pick up a lot of stuff, talk to a lot of dealers, some that didn't want to be on camera, and they had a lot to say about the market. And believe it or not, at this show, a lot of dealers said that they did quite well. In fact, many of them said that they were, in fact, selling gold, even though back at their shops, they're not selling a whole lot of it, which kind of echoes what Minot said the other day. But as always, there are going to be dealers that are doing better than others. It may depend on geography, where they are in the world. It may depend on what their prices and premiums are. I don't know what the difference is, but clearly there are still people buying gold. It just doesn't seem to be as strong as it was not long ago. So while this wasn't the perfect video, mostly due to technical difficulties that were all my fault, I do hope that you guys got a little bit out of this. As I said, I talked to many dealers, many of which didn't even want to get in front of the camera, and I did hear a lot of back and forth about what's selling and what isn't. Apparently at this show, everything was selling quite well, but as I already said, some dealers said back at their shop, they're echoing what Minot said, where gold doesn't seem to be selling at all. And it did seem very plentiful on the show floor. I was just showing a few showcases, but there were others, again, people that don't want to be recorded, have their property recorded. There were many coin cases with lots of gold, lots of silver eagles, lots of silver rounds, silver bars, so on and so forth. So with everything that I saw at this show and everything that I heard from the dealers, I honestly do not think that not only is there not a shortage, because I've been saying even back during the silver squeeze that there really isn't a silver shortage so much as it was a distribution issue, there is definitely going, at least to me, it looks like there's going to be a surplus of gold and silver with the weaker demand that we are seeing in the market overall. Even though some dealers like Mike are doing quite well and Ryan are doing quite well, that is not a universal truth in this current market. So we'll have to see where it goes from here. As always, I'm going to continue reporting on this. I'm going to continue interviewing dealers and I'm going to continue talking to people to get an insight as to what's going on in the physical gold and silver market. And I hope that you guys enjoy videos like this because if you have, you should go down and subscribe. Also, don't forget to smash that like button for me and help YouTube recommend this video to others. And check out this video above if you haven't seen that one yet. And we will see you in the very next video. Have a great rest of your day.